This time, I'm going to talk about parameter calibration for CIR model. One year ago, I created a YouTube video, Parameter Estimation of Vasacek Interest Rate Model and its Limitation. If you haven't viewed this video, you are welcome to go to my YouTube channel and view it first. From the viewer of this video, I got a question. If we can estimate parameters for CIR model. In this video, I'm going to answer this question. Let's check what is CIR model first. CIR model is an interest rate model. It is one factor model and it describes interest rate movements as driven by only one source of market risk. And it is an extension of the Vasicek model. Let's review what Vasicek model is first. Vasicek model is also an interest rate model. And it is also a one factor interest rate model and it is driven by only one source of market risk. So what is the difference between CRR model and Vasicek model? This is the formula for Vasicek model. Wt is a Wiener process. There are three parameters in this formula. B is a long-term mean level. It means over time, the interest rate will return to this long-term mean level. And A is speed of reversion. It measures how fast the interest rate will return to B, this long-term mean level. And the sigma is volatility. Now let's take a look at the CRR model. You can see these two formulas are very similar except this term. This is a sigma in Vasicek model, but this is a sigma times square root of r in this CIR model. So this term, sigma times the square root r is a standard deviation factor. And the benefit or a feature of CRR model is this term avoids the possibility of negative interest rate for all positive values of a and b. So if we want to forecast the interest rate movement, for example, in Japan, we cannot use CIR model. As you know, the interest rate in Japan is negative sometimes. But for the interest rate in the US, we can use the CIR model because so far the interest rate in the US is always positive. For this video, I downloaded monthly market rate of three months treasury bill from this website. And you can go there, download their data. It is free. For this video, I use the data from March 1st, 2010 to March 1st, 2020. So I use 10 years U.S. Treasury bill rate for my data. Now let's take a look what we need to do in order to calibrate parameters for CIR model. Again, this is the formula for the CIR model. Similar to Vasicek model, 
we need to decide B, long-term mean level, A, speed of reversion, and sigma volatility. First step, this is the easiest one. We can decide B, long-term mean level, by taking the average of interest rates. Step two, we can calculate the sum of the residual terms. I will explain how to calculate this RSS on the spreadsheet. Third step, we can decide discrete drift by minimizing RSS. Four, we can decide A, the speed of reversion from discrete drift. Five, we can calculate discrete volatility from RSS. The last step, we can calculate sigma from discrete volatility. I will explain the detail with my Excel spreadsheet about all those steps. Okay, let's go to my Excel spreadsheet. This is the Excel spreadsheet I used to estimate the parameters for the CIR model. As I mentioned before, I downloaded the interest rate data from this website. I put in this Excel spreadsheet. This is as of date, and this is the three months treasury rate in percentage. And then I calculate the absolute interest rate by dividing this downloaded interest rate with 100. If we draw a graph of this interest rate, you can see the interest rate over past 10 years moves like this. This big dip was caused by the recent coronavirus pandemic. Here I put all the three parameters we want to estimate in this CIR model here. This is long-term mean B, this is speed of reversion A, and this is volatility. First, I calculate relative interest rate. This relative interest rate is the absolute interest rate minus the long-term mean B. You can see it's like this. And then I calculate this residual term. The residual term is rate as of t minus D, which is discrete drift, which we want to estimate, times the R as of t minus 1. After I took the difference, I squared them and divided by the absolute interest rate. Okay. Let's estimate all the parameters. The long-term mean is quite straightforward. I just take the average of the, all the interest rate I got and use that as our long-term mean. And then the RSS is just sum of all the residual terms. Now, I want to minimize RSS and estimate discrete drift D. 
Okay. For example, we start discrete drift by just any number. In Excel, we can go to the Data tab and click Solver. And then we want to minimize B2, which is RSS, by changing the value in B3. B3 is the discrete drift. If we click Solve, and we keep solver solution click ok now you can see we got this discrete drift d the value is 0 0.9989 Now we want to calculate speed of reversion A. A is equal to the log of the reciprocal of discrete drift D. Next one, we want to calculate discrete volatility. This discrete volatility is calculated by divide RSS with number of data points and then take the square root. After we got discrete volatility, quite straightforward to convert to continuous volatility with this formula and then we can get sigma. You can see now we can get long-term mean B, speed of reversion A, and continuous volatility sigma. So we got all three parameters for our CRR model. This is how I calibrate parameters for CRR model. Please provide your comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.